Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Courtside with Beelance and Tennis, part of the Tennis Channel Podcast Network. We are so happy to have with us on tonight, Brad Cox, the current Director of Business Development at Top Court. Top Court is an online instruction and storytelling platform enabling tennis fans to learn from the game's best players and top coaches. Brad has quite the tennis background himself in that he trained at IMG Academy from the ages of 14 through 18 and trained with all the pros that came through the academy, including Kay Nishikori. Brad went on to compete collegiately at University of Kentucky, where he was an All-American his junior year, along with being a captain both his junior and senior year. And to add as a fun fact, Brad may or may not have been a contestant on The Bachelorette. We are happy to hear Brad's journey through the sport of tennis and to learn more about his current venture at Top Court. It is my privilege to welcome to the court side with Beelance and Tennis Pod, Brad Cox. Brad, I promise we won't go into much on The Bachelorette, but thanks for <laughs> taking time uh, and, and sharing your tennis journey with me, man. Absolutely. Might need to hold with, withhold some of that information, but uh, I, I do appreciate it. And I'm honored to, um, to be on here with you, David, and, and obviously looking forward to chatting with you further about top court and, and obviously the tennis background. And, and most importantly, looking at, uh, at ways, as, as you are, looking at ways to promote the game of tennis. For sure. So we're, we're going to get to your very interesting background in a minute. But if you can, um, at, a, at a high level, Tell a little bit about what, what Top Court is all about and, and talk about your current role as the Director of Business Development at the company. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of interesting. It's a, uh, this is my first time working in a startup and, and Top Court is a, uh, an online platform um, that really has a few facets, which is really unique, um, I think, in, in regards to what we're doing from a, a tennis platform standpoint. It has a few facets built into it. It's partly educational, uh, partly storytelling and, and partly behind the scenes as it currently stands today. Um, as you know, and, um, and have probably seen, there's, there's definitely plenty of content um, from an educational standpoint that's out there. Uh, various either players, coaches, so forth, um, which is always great to see. I think what we haven't seen before is uh, seeing that content coming from directly from the pros themselves, in particular, the, the game's best. So we have um, everybody on the platform is going to be uh, somewhere in the in the top 40, top 50 in the world on the men's and women's side. And then we also, as you pointed out, have a couple of the um, very well-known coaches, uh, Brad Gilbert, Paul Anacone, to name a couple. So um, so I'm leading business development uh, along with um, a few other colleagues of mine to get out there and, and, and not only get the name out for Top Code, not only get the content and, and users um, onto the platform, but you know, our ultimate goal is obviously to continue to promote the game of tennis and and um, and build up the not only the the viewership of tennis, but obviously get people out playing. And I think this has been an interesting time during COVID, as you've probably seen being involved in tennis yourself, that uh, it's actually forced people to get out and do things um, outdoors. You know, I think we got tired of being inside. Um, and what was great is that tennis was one of those sports that um, that kind of allowed for people to to do that socially um, responsibly. And uh, so I think it's good timing for something like Top Court, which is uh, an edutainment, as they like to call it um, in the tech world, edutainment platform um, that allows for micro learning. So you'll see a lot of video clips, um, typically short, three to five minutes of these top pros going through drills, technique. Um, and then one thing that I'm very very interested in myself personally, just because my back end is probably not changing a whole lot these days, is uh, is the behind the scenes and storytelling from these players. You know, one thing that you and I and, and really the general public um, don't always get to see is what goes on for these tennis players um, before they step on the court at, at Wimbledon or Arthur Ashe. Um, so it gives us great insight into what, what are they doing from a training perspective, mentality, um, you know, what are they doing off court wise, what do they like to do for fun? Um, so all this content is something that we're really excited about getting out there to not just your general tennis fan, but I think the general public um, as a whole. Yeah, for sure. And I've been on the site and you guys have great, great things on there. Again, not only instructional, but again, as you reiterated, the behind the scenes, the stories, which I know tennis fans will really enjoy. I want to talk, uh, yeah. I want to dive deeper into your background because it's really interesting. You were born in... Johannesburg, South Africa. You then moved yep. to the States when you were young. You then 
moved again. You lived in New Zealand from like 11 to 13. You were all <laughs> over the place from like 11 to 13 years old. Um, shortly before the age 11, you started playing tennis. Um, some people may know your younger brother, Jordan, um, who played on the pro tour for a bit. Kind of talk about your background growing up, how, how you got started into playing tennis. And if you can, um, I know you probably have a couple fun stories at IMG uh, Academy that you can share with everybody. <laughs> Definitely. So uh, it's kind of interesting. I mean, people always think that, uh, that our family um, is, a, is an army family of sorts, just because of obviously all the traveling, but uh, very international um, influenced, internationally influenced with my parents both being uh, born overseas. Um, and to make a long story short, we made ourselves or made our way to the, the States uh, when I was pretty young and, um, and ended up in, a, in actually in Atlanta, Georgia, which um, for those who are involved in tennis know it's a pretty big community when it comes to tennis. It has one of the largest tennis associations um, per capita. It's called Alta Atlanta Lawn Tennis Association. So there was a lot of influence here with us, you know, coming from an athletic background with my parents both dabbling in sports most of their lives. Um, it certainly lent uh, for my brother and I to, to get into something and it happened to be tennis. So, um, so started playing and, and actually in terms of, of tennis and, and um, starting out, I think it's, it's most would probably refer to 10 years old, 11 years old actually being pretty late uh, to get introduced to the game. Um, you know, you see most kids, uh, especially a lot of the pros out there, they'll talk about starting or putting a tennis racket in their hand when they're about four, four or five years old. So we were, we were late bloomers, but, um, but we picked it up relatively quickly. Uh, helps having the athletic genes in there from our parents. Um, and yeah, so we, we trained in Atlanta for a good portion, moved to New Zealand and actually uh, worked with a great coach down there. That's actually when I switched from a two-hander to a one-hander, uh, one-handed backhand, which was a big transition. Um, and so... Pete from Sampras there, also uh, Pete, Pete Sampras, Sampras also that's from a two-hander to a one-hander. Who, exactly, and that turned out at, at around... And he turned out all right. Yeah, my, my story doesn't quite turn out the way his does, but uh, <laughs> but but um, all, all the while he he was actually my favorite player growing up. So I, I emulated him um, pretty much on every facet of my game. I actually served and volleyed or tried to uh, for a good portion of my career. Um, so we came back to New Zealand and actually uh, ended up at IMG Academy. Um, I was very very fortunate to get a, a scholarship there uh, when I was fourteen. Um, which was kind of interesting because that was a big transition period for me after just switching to a one-handed backhand. Um, I guess it was kind of unique to see someone at that age serve and volleying, um, which I think stood out to them. At that time, Taylor Dent was a big, uh, one of the bigger players at IMG Academy, Max Mirani, Tommy Haas, um, in terms of the current, the current pros that were out there. Um, and yeah, in terms of stories, have plenty. Uh, but um, we, we lived in a pretty talented dorm uh, of tennis players. Kay Nishikori, uh, Philip Bester, Devin Britton, Jesse Levine. Um, I mean, the list, the list goes on and on. My brother joined us, Austin Krychek, who's, who's out there still. Um, so, I mean, the, the talent that comes through IMG Academy um, every day is, is pretty, pretty remarkable. Um, I happened to somehow fit myself into that, into that mix. And, um, you know, one of my fondest stories, I have a few, uh, but, you know, Kay and I arrived, Kay and, and I arrived at the same time. And, and, you know, at the time his English wasn't the greatest, uh, coming over from Japan. And so, uh, it was always pretty comical when, you know, we'd all be hanging out in the dorm watching TV and you suddenly hear these high pitched laughs coming from, from his bedroom while he's in there watching, uh, watching the Japanese cartoons. Um, so that was always, uh, always pretty comical. And the, I guess the other aspect was we, we liked to mess with each other. He, he always, um, not to be stereotypical at all, but he made some of the best white rice that, you know, you would ever have. And, and he had his own rice cooker that he brought in. And one of my things, cause I'm a ma I love white rice is I would, uh, I would sometimes go in there and steal, um, a few portions of his white rice without him looking. So, for sure. Um, which I know for, he, for, yeah, he for, wasn't. For context, above, what years were, around what years were you training at IMG? Sorry, yeah. So I was there from 2003 uh, right up to when I went to college. I was there for four years, 2003 to 2007. And I went to University of Kentucky in the fall wow. of 2007. So Kay was, Kay was young. So Kay must have been young when you were there. Same age, yeah. So we both got there at, at right around, he's about six months younger than me. Um, okay. 
so we got there pretty much the same age 13 14. Okay. cool yeah. so i mean, obviously did well um went to university of kentucky was curious how uh, that all came about were there other schools uh that were looking at you that um, you were looking at them and at the end of the day how did uh kentucky win out yeah um it's a great question i for the longest time, I was uh, very determined to only go pro, you know, play the pro tour. So it was uh, right up even to the day that I signed to Kentucky. I always had my mindset to go play professionally. And, and I'm so glad that uh, I didn't make the jump straight to the pros because I, I think it's, it's obviously a very, very difficult path to go down. Um, and my brother is a, is a testament to, to doing that route. Um, but you're starting to see more and more guys go that college route just because of the maturity that you find, um, obviously, especially on the men's side. Uh, that you'll get from going to college. And um, so, yeah, there were other schools uh, in the mix. Um, Vanderbilt was in there, did a visit to Florida. Uh, Northwestern was actually on there as well up there in Chicago. Uh, so there was a few schools on there. I think um, at the time, and I would, I would still arguably say it, it, say it so today, that the SEC is, is probably the strongest tennis conference and obviously being in a part of the country where it does allow you to play pretty much all year round outside for the most part. Um, obviously that, that, that helps, but um, so yeah, I was always pretty keen on going to the SEC and uh, there was an IMG Academy connection at the time with um, our assistant coach when I was there and he's now the head coach is Cedric Kaufman, uh, a French guy who, um, who played on the pro tour, got to ride around a hundred in the world. Um, and they hit the recruiting trail pretty hard and around that time, and, and he happened to uh, cross paths with me. So we had that connection. He had the connection to IMG because he went there for a little while. Um, so it just ended up being a great fit. I never would have in my mind, ever in my mind thought I would have ended up in a place like Kentucky, and, and I'm glad I did. I mean, it was, a, it was a good school. It was a beautiful part of the country, a lot of horse farms that are this pretty stunning area to go to, and then obviously the tennis program is um, – pretty outstanding uh, we, we had some great results when I was there yeah any one or two uh, moments you, you you can share or like talk about a little bit yeah I mean I think obviously my most my, my proudest is obviously becoming an all-american um, that's probably one of the the biggest uh, outstanding achievements on my end um, you know one thing about tennis as you know uh, David is you know it's a it's an individual sport for really um, most of your life unless you go to play college tennis and I think that's to me uh, was one of the most profound things to be a part of is what was an actual team. And, you know, if all you played is tennis and no other team sports, you didn't really know what it was like to play for somebody else. Um, so I, uh, I'm so glad that I made that decision to go to college because it, it puts a, a different type of pressure on yourself. You know, everybody for the most part is pretty competitive. Obviously there's very variety of levels when it comes to competitiveness. And um, I think when you have not only competing for yourself, but competing for your teammates, um, it, whole, it, it adds a whole other uh, level of satisfaction, I think, when, when you go out there and you compete well, win or lose. Um, it's just it was fun to be a part of the team. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think being an All-American there and then we made the quarters of NCAAs. Uh, that was my junior year, I believe, junior or senior year. Um, and that was just a fun stage to play on. I mean, you know, you're playing against some, the best guys in college tennis on a, on a pretty big stage, great crowds. Um, so no, that was, a that was a fun time. Awesome. And, and again, I mean, your, your statement of how fun it is to be part of the team. I mean, we hear that so much now, even the pros that did not go to college. I mean, obviously labor cup, that just entails the best players in the, in the world, but even this past summer world team tennis, I mean, how great was that? Yep. And you saw, because there wasn't a lot of other tennis going on at that time, you saw a lot of top players play world tennis that maybe wouldn't have in the past. And it was such a great season. And I think more top players are going to join that event uh, in the future just because, again, as you said, being part of a team uh, is so cool, especially in a sport where it's really individualized. So um, yeah, I hear you, and, and, and it's so fun. And, and, and you, could, you could see it, both guys and girls um, love it. So uh, for sure. Agreed. Agreed. Um, in your previous, um, I'd say, post – competitive tennis career your business career now you you've been involved in sales and and in business development and other companies um some dealing with sports some outside the sports industry you're a tennis guy this top court seems to be a natural fit um 
I guess what specifically piqued your interest in it? And uh, uh, again, I mean, it must be super cool working for a company where, where it's your love, man. I mean, you love the sport of tennis. Yeah, it's just funny. It happened to come a, you know, I'm a big believer that things happen for a reason. Um, you know, I was, as you pointed out, I've worked in a couple different industries. I've worked in healthcare. I've, I've worked in IT services. Um, and then I eventually ended up in sports entertainment and, you know, for the last five ish years, I was working mainly in really live sports entertainment and, um, which has been booming, uh, up until, you know, earlier this year, you know, when we had a rude awakening with, with COVID, uh, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, as I pointed, you know, as I said before, I think things happen for a reason. And though I, I hate that COVID-19 has, has occurred and is still happening. Um, you know, it, 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 uh, it allowed for, um, you know, this to come across my plate, top court being this opportunity and, uh, and it's with some really incredible and super smart founders, um, and some, and some great investors that are backing this, um, you know, the tennis community, as you know, is pretty small. Everybody seems to know each other in some shape or form, um, through directly or indirectly through other people. And, and so they, uh, they had reached out, um, middle this year, uh, about an opportunity with them. And I just thought with the way that things are going, um, in the live event space, live entertainment space, that, um, that this might be a good opportunity to jump on, especially because obviously tennis being, you know, one of my biggest passions. So, uh, I think it's, uh, I'm still very, uh, green in, um, in top court and to quite frankly, top, top court's only recently launched in June. So, we're all relatively green in this space, but it's been um, it's been an exciting and fun short journey thus far uh, that I hope um, will will take us uh, to some pretty cool places. No, oh, for sure, and it's fun learning together and growing together. So I'm sure you guys are all enjoying what you're doing, especially in the in the climate that we're in. You know, we talked a little bit about Top Court, about how you do have some of the best players in the world and some of the top coaches, uh, like you said, Paul Anacone, Brad Gilbert. Um, where do you see, and I guess this is kind of maybe a tough question because you guys have just launched and just really getting going, but um, as you continue to sign up top players and top coaches, where do you see this company going? And maybe um, where do you see something, uh, where do you see this company growing long-term? Yeah, I think what's really neat about Top Court is um, one, the talent that's behind it, both internally at Top Court, but obviously the the, the talent that's on the actual platform. But um, I don't know if that's even completely defined yet what uh what top court's capabilities are to me uh, and I'm looking at this very optimistically I typically do is it has a lot of legs to it and I think there's a lot of different ways that we can um take this and and help influence uh tennis um and the tennis community uh the way that I'm seeing things go right now is uh, you know even before covid there was you were noticing a shift obviously technology is playing a huge role in all facets of our lives. Um, and, and it's, it's definitely made its way into, into sports, but I think tennis has been one of those ones that, um, hasn't necessarily been in the forefront when it comes to technology. Um, it's, it's definitely been more of a traditional sport, uh, in that sense. But, uh, I, I think that leaves a lot of opportunity to, uh, to create something pretty special where top court, um, has found itself. And, uh, and so I think you're going to continue to see, uh, really cool, interactive, and engaging, engaging content for, from these players, um, you know, both on the men's and women's side, as well as, you know, a lot of these big name coaches. Um, but I do see, you know, fingers crossed that we can start getting back into um, some live experiences with these players and coaches. Um, and obviously, until then, we'll definitely explore the virtual or live webinar um, area with these, with these coaches and players. Um, and, and really the ultimate goal here, as I pointed out, is, is to obviously promote the game of tennis, but to keep these, these players engaged with the sport. I think, um, you know, one thing that I've noticed is you have a lot of middle school and high schoolers who being bombarded these days with so many, so much different content, um, that they can sometimes lose interest in things and, and tennis being one of those. Um, so I really hope that we can make an impact in particular in those ages. And granted, this platform can be from, for anyone from the age of, you know, 10, 11 to 75 plus. I think that's what's great about tennis. You can play your whole life. But 
I think if we can really try and engage uh, a lot of those kids who are in that middle school, high school age range um, through this type of online content, um, I think you'll see the statistics show eventually that those numbers will increase and, and people will stay engaged with the sport. And again, it doesn't have to be on a competitive level. I think what's great about this is, you know, you can, you can get out there and have a hit with your friend or, you know, even during COVID, I've heard, I've heard of a lot of families getting out and playing amongst each other, uh, which is really kind of unheard of. You normally have the junior go out and play with the coach and then the, the parent will go out and hit with the coach later on. So it's great to hear that despite we're going through some difficult times that, you know, it's had families come together and go out and play a great sport like tennis. So, uh, again, I think I could go on and on about the opportunities that um, are ahead of us with top court. But uh, I think if we can show a lasting impact like that, um, you know, really engage uh, the, the tennis community and, um, and, and keep helping with um, continuous play and, and longer play. Um, I think I think that'll be a, a huge accomplishment on our part. Well, let's hope so. And I couldn't agree more with you with, with, with what you said, with exactly with friends getting together, even more family time getting out and playing tennis. And uh, yeah, you don't want to lose that demographic, obviously. And um, this, this platform is so great. And I wish you uh, and your company the best of luck again. I, I'm, I'm a user on the platform. Um, I help promote the the platform it is great the the tools and we appreciate you, you for that <laughs> yeah the tools you have on there um it, again is super cool and and especially seeing the behind the scenes stuff from both the players and the and the coaches and then you see the the drills that the pros do you always want to train people always want to train like the pros they do they do regular drills like you do <laughs> you may just have never yeah. seen it so um yeah. super super cool that 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 the public has access to this and Brad, I just want to wrap up by saying, uh, you know, best of luck to you. Stay healthy, obviously, first priority. And, and best of luck to your company. Uh, you guys are off to a great, great start. I really appreciate that, David. It's been a pleasure being on here. And, um, and obviously, love having you a part of the platform. Uh, obviously, you're very engaged with the tennis community and in, in, uh, in the middle states there. And, um, and hopefully that uh, continues. Um, and and more, uh, more exciting things to come with Top Court. And I have to point out, we got – Two of our talented players on the platform are actually going to be playing in the women's final of the French Open on uh, on Saturday. We have uh, Kenan and uh, and Iga both playing, and, and they're both on the platform. So it's good to see uh, some of these players, in particular the young ones, coming through and um, and making a run like this. Well, I, I will say before we leave, we we will not get this out before the French Open final because it's in like. It's <laughs> Two days. It's happening but, two days. Yeah, that yeah. is that is that is great that that you have those type of players. And again, if you haven't been on the platform, go check it out. Um, they they got some of the best in the world. So again, Brad, thanks thanks so much for your time, and I'm looking forward to uh, staying in contact with with you. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, David.